French rugby squad made their way to Ballymore Stadium in Brisbane, hoping that their so near but so far relationship with the Rugby World Cup tournament might finally bear fruit this time around. The traditionally unpredictable style of the French team has thrilled rugby audiences since the inaugural World Cup in 1987. However, it has also conspired to lose the French two finals, one semi-final and one quarter-final in the four tournaments to date. France's captain and scrum half, Fabien Galfier, has had a particularly frustrating time in his pursuit of the William Webb Ellis Trophy. He was part of the French teams that lost in the quarterfinals in 91, the semi-finals in 95, and the final in 99. Laporte took over national duties after France slumped to that 35-12 defeat to Australia in 1999, just a week after a thrilling comeback to beat the All Blacks in the semi-final. And despite his insistence on more attention to defence and set pieces in the 2003 World Cup in Australia, he will not turn his back on the free spirit that has often sparked a thrilling French comeback and just as frequently set them on the road to self-destruction. France's studious coach has also instilled a solidity about his front eight, ably demonstrated by Le Bleu hard fought 17-16 win over England in Marseille. Laporte's charges may not be revered by the sages in the same way as England and the All Blacks, but it will not be the first time France has been written off. Along with France in Group B were the American Eagles. They too had an ultimate goal at the World Cup in Australia, and although their aim may not have been as lofty as their opposition, it was just as important to the men from the United States, the land where rugby is almost anonymous to the majority. The Eagles were aiming to win at least one group game, which they succeeded in doing by beating Japan. It will doubtless mean nothing in the context of who qualifies from this group, but the Americans will be focused on gaining as much as they can from 